started with wood and turned it into this totally custom 14 foot long five and a half foot wide conference table and you're gonna watch it all right here ligari.com Welcome back to Ligari, guys. Getting ready to coat this massive conference table we, we built. It's 14 feet long, five and a half feet wide. We cut out these cool slits in here for uh, our IMAX to go in. All the cords can go in the middle there. Massive, massive desk. Simple build, built it all out of wood. I don't know, if you can get an undershot, show them how we kind of built it out of wood. Two by fours on the edges, the braces, and then three quarter inch MDF board screwed to the top and then we did Bondo and drywall mud all the seams and then we added a piece of trim board all on the edges screwed it all in glued it that way you know our edges look really really dialed so now I'm just getting ready to prime it now we're gonna prime it just like everything else using our black WB primer So typically you would just do a foam roller on this because we're going to do like a, a squeezy texture or finish or like a trial. We're not going to really swirl the colors and blend them. So we don't have a foam roller, so we're using our nap roller and we, bought, we de shedded it. Make sure you de shed these rollers. Any nap roller you ever get, you always want to de shed them because they will uh, shed some, some of the roller hairs. 
So all I'm doing right now is just trying to get this roller soaked up in epoxy. Kind of all over the place. I don't want to just sit in one spot. All right, so now I'm gonna add the highlight colors. I'm gonna set this, I don't wanna set it on the floor because it's all dusty from sanding. Gotta set it in that bucket that we poured out of. I'll just tilt it in there. We'll grab our colors. And all we're gonna do on this is just pour them out random, random spots. Just all over. I don't want to go the same direction with any of them. I want to get some of the color spots right on the edges. That'll help continuously flow over that edge and give us some really good looking edges. All right, that color's done. We're gonna grab the famous teal color. And we're gonna go in between all these spots. same magic trowel and we're going to start blending these colors together. spray our dispersing effects isopropyl alcohol 91% and this is orange gold he's gonna be doing our snow white orange gold's a pretty potent color so I'm not gonna get a lot out there just kind of random spots and he'll start doing the doing the white and spritzing it, shaking it as we go. We want that color to pop out there. Get some more concentrated spots. So look at the effects we're getting now. Looking amazing. We still got two more colors. We might, we might do these. Uh, we're gonna do black for sure. To get some more of this. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna just go through and hit all my little craters that it, that it went down to the primer at. I mean, a lot of people will just leave the craters. They they give it a cool look. I probably will leave a few. And just see how it like, if I lift up and move, it leaves a little dot, a little stringer. Try to come straight up. That we don't have a little stringer coming off of them with color. 
that's it you just pat them in real simple and they still have a cool look a cool effect right there All right, so we're getting ready to do the flood coat, our glaze coat, thick layer of clear epoxy. We've already sanded it, sanded our edges. We even ran a bead of tape underneath here. That way, in case we get drips, we can just pull that tape off underneath this edge, be nice and smooth. Um, and then we did an acetone wipe and a clean rag, and now we're just gonna pour out our clear epoxy. And I'm gonna go kind of smaller beads and go back and forth, because I wanna make sure I try to get a good even amount on each side. I don't want to get too much on one side, but watch once this epoxy hits that floor, it brings back the color, gets rid of the scratch marks from the sander. It's really, really cool. So now what I'm looking for is thickness of the beads. Like I got a little, that's a little thin here, wider, wider, really wide. So I don't want to pour any more here maybe a little bit in these thin spots, and then I'll go over there, add some more to those thin spots, and this will help make sure we got an even, even coat on each side. So same way we did the, the base coat of black yesterday, we're gonna do, do the magic trial. Easiest way to do this is just pull it up and pull it back. Get right to that edge, pretty close, and just flatten it off. This will get us a pretty even coat everywhere. So if you ever run into like doing a foam roller or a different roller where not really laying out easy or flat. Maybe switch a roller, go from a foam roller to a nap roller. Uh, we kind of had a few issues with the, the foam roller not rolling it out good because it's such a thick coat, it just was pushing the product. So we switched to our nap roller and now we got a nice even coat. Uh, just a little trip, just, just a little tip, you know, in case you guys have are having issues rolling out a thick flood coat. Just make sure you de-shed the roller. So you apply our glaze coat just like you would your base coat of metallic epoxy. You get the tops done, and then you come back, roll a little on the top, hit, hit a little bit of your edges, do your corners, roll a little on the top, hit the edges. And you can see how once you hit the edges with epoxy, all the sander marks go away, all the white goes away, brings back all the color. You don't want to try dry rolling the edges. You want to get a good coat. That way the product just keeps flowing over. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around, look at all different angles in the table, and I'm going to be looking for roller hairs, debris, like we got a little bit right here. And I'm just going to use a razor blade and pick those out. We just want to get those out of there. But you got to really get down different angles. And look, we got a couple, couple chunkies over there I want to get out. Got one right here. But for how massive this is and how minimal roller hairs we got in it, very, very impressive. Here, come and get a close up right here. You can actually see this epoxy fizzing because of our defoamer. All these little micro bubbles and bubbles are rising to the surface and popping. If you get it the right angle and light, you can kind of see the surface of that epoxy 
kind of kind of foaming a little bit, like blistering almost. It's like a, like fizzing. That's what that's what makes our stuff lay out glass smooth without bubbles. It's an additive that we add to all of our resin. All right, so we're building the legs for the table. These are six inch by six inch square tubing, nice and chunky. Got the angle irons welded on. So these will bolt, bolt, will drill holes in here. These will bolt underneath the table into the two by fours. Really simple way to do it. Justin's over here uh, getting ready to cut the middle beam. Thanks for watching everyone. Ligari.com, the inventors of the DIY countertop and floor epoxy kits. If you're not buying from us, you're not getting the original. We love to show you the options and, and unlimited designs and things you can do with our products. It's super cool, super easy to use, and they always look amazing. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below, share the videos, help us get the word out. This product is changing the resin industry. And remember, Ligari.com has you covered.